What's the best music release strategy for independent artists? Raise your hand if you think, I'm just kidding, I can't see you, but how should you go about releasing your music? Should you just release singles? Are albums even relevant anymore? How often do you need to release music? Where do you promote it? How do you promote it? Well, I spoke with an artist last week that has some new music that he wants to release and he was asking me what's the best way to create a release plan for this music. And I kind of mapped it all out for him and while I was doing that I realized that this would be a really good topic for a YouTube video. So here we are. In this video I'm going to explain how to release music to get more exposure, more streams on any budget. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up guys, Justin here, and today I'm gonna to address one of the most common questions independent artists have, and that's what's the best strategy for releasing my music? So I spoke to a hip hop artist last week and I mapped out a strategy based on his specific situation, which includes a $200 a, a month budget for uh, promotion. So I'm gonna break down the strategy that I mapped out for him with a relatively limited budget of just $200 a month. And along the way, I'm gonna share some tips that'll help you release your music and plan a strategy Strategy, even if your budget is zero dollars and I'm also going to share some tips for how you can plan a release when you have a much larger budget now every artist is different and every artist situation is different which means that there's not exactly a one-size-fits-all approach to releasing your music however in this video I am going to do my best to sort of make it one-size-fits-all by in addressing some important questions that you're gonna to have to ask yourself and answer honestly, and then I'll explain what you can do. So the artist I was chatting with last week, um, he has a 10 track mixtape that he wants to release. And the first question that we need to address here is, well, should you release an album or mixtape with a bunch of songs all at once? Or should you be releasing singles? Break up the release, don't release everything at once, and just drop singles throughout the year. Well, that depends. What does it depend on? It depends on the KFS factor. So KFS stands for Nose Fan Superfan. So as you start promoting your music to people who don't know you, the first step is to get them to know who you are. Now, once people know you, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be a fan of your music or like your music, but the more people that you can get to know you, as you get more people to know you, then some of those people will become fans, and then some of those people will move on and become super fans. So the difference between somebody that just knows you versus a fan is that somebody that knows you may or may not like your music, they may or may not stream your music. Fans will obviously stream your music and then the super fans will actually potentially spend some money with you. So the reason why I bring this up when it comes to how you're gonna plan out your music is that when you have a fan base, an existing fan base, these people here that actually are already fans of your music and some of them might be super fans that are willing to spend some money when you give them a reason to. If you have this already, if you have that fan base, then it makes sense why you would consider planning an album release because you can make a lot of money from an album release when you plan it out right if you have these people that are willing to spend a little bit of money when you give them a reason to. So there are some major benefits to planning an album release when you have this, when you have an existing fan base. But if you don't have that existing fan base yet, then you're not gonna be able to take advantage of a good album release. Nobody's looking forward to your music, so that album release is essentially irrelevant at that point. There's no point in planning an album release if you don't have an existing fan base. So if you have fans already, if you have a pretty decent sized fan base and they're willing to spend money with you, then it makes sense to plan an album release. If not, stick with singles. With this particular artist I was speaking with last week, he doesn't really have much of a fan base, so it makes sense in his case to focus on releasing singles. That way he can keep feeding Spotify fresh content he can keep giving his existing listeners new stuff to keep them engaged. He can get more people to know who he is by catering to Spotify's algorithm. And then over time, as he starts building his fan base, then maybe down the road, once he has an existing fan base, it might make sense to think about releasing a full mixtape or album. I would imagine that most of you watching this are probably in a similar situation where you might not have enough of a fan base to warrant an album release. So you would also want to focus on releasing singles. That way you can cater to Spotify's algorithm and leverage that to get more people to know you and ultimately become fans. Now at this point, we're gonna shift our focus to the single release strategy, but if you would like me to create a video on how you can plan an album release, just let me know in the comment section of this video. So once we've determined that it makes sense to break up the 10 tracks and release them individually as singles, what's next? Well, we have to decide when we're gonna release each single. So my suggestion would be about six to eight weeks apart. 
This way you have new music being released frequently and you still have enough time to promote each track. So focus on promoting each track individually leading up to its release and for a couple weeks after its release. Then move on to promoting the next track. So an example of how you might do this if you were releasing a single every six weeks would be to promote your upcoming release for three weeks leading up to the release date and then promote that release for three more weeks after the release date and then shift your focus to promoting the next release. Promote it for three weeks leading up to its release date and then for three weeks after it's been released rinse and repeat. This way you're in a perpetual state of promoting new music and this will allow you to continuously get more exposure, get more people to know who you are and in time you'll get more fans and more super fans. And releasing music this way should result in incrementally more engagement and more streams around every release. But how do you actually go about promoting your new releases? Well, first you need to upload your music to your distributor. Now for those of you that are brand new to all this and don't have a distributor yet, uh, getting your music distributed to major streaming platforms and put in stores where fans can purchase downloads of your music is a very simple process. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but I'll put a link to another video in the description where you can learn more about that. Now, as far as uploading your new releases to your distributor, just be sure that you're doing that well in advance of the actual release date. That way you can submit your music to Spotify's editorial staff and potentially get your music added to popular Spotify playlists, which can get you a lot of exposure at the time of your release. Now, this is 100% free to do. There are, of course, no guarantees that your music's gonna get added to any playlist, but it is a good best practice to have for all your releases because, again, it's free and it doesn't take much time and the payoff can be huge. Now, I'd recommend submitting your upcoming releases to Spotify's editors at least six weeks in advance. That gives them plenty of time to actually listen to it before the release date. Another place you can go to get your new release added to playlists would be Submit Hub. Again, this is something you can do for free. However, you can also pay for premium credits that'll help you get more of your submissions reviewed by playlist curators. Beyond playlist submissions, you can also submit your music to influencers and music bloggers. I have more detailed videos on how you can do that here on this channel, which I'll link to in the video description. You might also try to book an interview to promote your upcoming release on podcasts or local college radio stations. And of course, you wanna let your existing fans and followers know about your releases on social media and via email. But how do you promote a track to your fans that's not out yet? What do you promote? It would be a good idea to get your existing fans to pre-save the track on Spotify. When a fan pre-saves your upcoming track, the track is automatically saved to the fan Spotify library as soon as that track's released. And this is the kind of engagement that shows Spotify that your music is worth noticing and it can help you get added to algorithmic playlists like Discover Weekly, Release Radar, Daily Mixes, and Artist Radio Playlists. If you use DistroKid as your distributor, you can create what they call a hyper follow page, which is a simple landing page where your fans can stream your music on various platforms. But if your music is not yet available, if this is prior to the release date, then the page is automatically converted into a pre-save page where your fans can pre-save your upcoming track. If you don't use DistroKid as your distributor, you can always use a service like Hypedit to create a pre-save landing page. Along with sharing a pre-save page with your existing fans, how else can you get them hyped and excited about your upcoming release? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do and the more creative you get here, the better. But a few examples would be releasing rough cuts of the track on social media and to your email subscribers. You can post videos of you in the studio recording the new track, post live versions of the song. You can release a music video. Okay, so get creative. If you're a musician, that means you're probably a pretty creative person. So I'm sure you can think of some cool stuff to do to get your fans excited about your new releases. But what about people that haven't heard of you yet? I mean, that's a big part of what we're trying to do here. Help more people discover your music. So how can you promote your release to people that haven't heard of you? Well, we already went over some free promotion stuff that you can do like submitting to Spotify's editorial staff, using Submit Hub, or trying to do some PR with interviews on college radio stations or podcasts. But what if you have a little bit of money that you wanna put behind your promotion? Like I mentioned earlier, the artist that inspired this video had a $200 a month budget. And if you have a larger budget, I would want to allocate that across a lot of different channels. I'll get more to that in a moment. However, with that kind of budget, with a $200 a month budget, I would generally recommend spending that on Facebook ads. By the way, when I say Facebook ads, I'm also referring to Instagram ads. They're both run through Facebook. Now, there are a few different ways that you could spend your ad budget to build your following. You could focus on building your following on social media. You could build your email list, or you could focus on getting people over to Spotify to follow you on Spotify and stream your music there. Now, all three of these ways are good ways to get people to know you and ultimately 
Some of them hopefully will become fans and super fans. And the fact of the matter is a $200 a month budget isn't really that much money. So you really need to figure out what is your primary focus. And this could be different for everybody. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but whatever your primary focus is, that's probably where you need to allocate that monthly budget to. Now, if you, all you care about is growing your following on Spotify, if that's all you're worried about right now, just getting more people to follow you on Spotify, then you would want to use that Facebook ad budget to drive people to your Spotify channel. If you want to build your following on Instagram or other social media, then you would want to focus that budget there if that's your primary goal. In the case of this particular artist that I was talking to, we want to focus on building his email list. And that's really what I would recommend for most independent artists. Now here's the reason why. I'm not going to get too deep into this, but in a nutshell, one of the drawbacks to focusing that ad budget on just Spotify alone is that you can get people over to Spotify that might be following you and streaming your music, but there's not really a lot of communication that can happen there. It's really hard to follow up with somebody uh, just because they follow you on Spotify and stream your music there. If you have upcoming tour dates, new merch, or if there's any other thing that you want to communicate or promote to that fan base to help build that fan base, you really can't do that very well with just Spotify. Social media allows you to do that, but there are some limitations to social media as well. One being that just because you post something on social media doesn't mean that all your fans are going to see it. An algorithm is going to determine who actually gets to see your content. And just because somebody follows you doesn't mean that they're going to see your posts, unfortunately. Now there are some added benefits to social media, like the potential to go viral if you're really good at creating shareable content. So there are reasons why you would want to focus on social media, but generally speaking, email is just better for more consistently being able to reach your fans, being able to communicate when you want with whatever you want and send people along this path from just knowing you to becoming fan and becoming a super fan because you can just have more control, okay? Again, I know that some of you, if you're not familiar with how email works in this regard, you might have some questions about that. If you want me to create a video explaining why I advocate email over social media and Spotify as the primary source where you allocate your ad budget to build your fan base in most cases for independent artists, I can create another video on that. Let me know in the comments below. However, moving on just so I can kind of give you an idea of what I was describing to this particular artist and what I was suggesting was focus on getting that email address and then on the thank you page, so once you, you know, send somebody to a page where they enter their email address, they join your email list, they're immediately redirected to another page once they hit that submit button, sign up to your email list. And then on that page, you can thank them, welcome them to your email list, thank them for joining, let them, you know, share some of your music. And on that page, you can share, you know, links to uh, Spotify. You can have an embedded Spotify player. You can have a follow button so people can follow you on Spotify immediately after they sign up to your email list. You can also have uh, some more like uh, buttons where they can follow you on social media as well. And then in your follow-up series, because you'll have automated emails that go out to fans once they've signed up to your email list, you can then communicate in other ways with them. You can share more content on social media, more of your music on Spotify. And ultimately by focusing on getting that email address first, you can build your following on Spotify and build your following on social media. And you have the ability to connect with those fans and communicate with them whenever you want. Now, regardless of which of these you would consider your primary focus, generally speaking, Facebook ads are the number one way that I would recommend allocating your ad budget to build your following. Now, actually setting up those ads and running them effectively is something that we simply don't have time for in this video, but if you would like me to make a video on that topic, just let me know in the comment section. Now, what if you have a little bit more money to spend and you really want to throw some fuel on the fire? Well, in addition to maybe you know allocating your initial budget to building your email list, another way that you could use Facebook ads to really grow your Spotify would be to run ads sending people directly to your music on Spotify. This has a lot of advantages over getting added to Spotify playlists because you will get a lot more engagement this way. Running ads directly to your music on your artist profile will result in more active streaming and more active engagement versus what you would get from having your music simply added to playlists, which results in passive streams. When someone listens to your music on a playlist, they're typically listening like they would on the radio. But they're most often listening to that music. It's just music that's playing in the background while they're doing something else. Now, ultimately, this is the way that most of your streams will occur. Most of your streams will likely end up being passive streams coming from playlists, whether those are algorithmic playlists, editorial playlists, or listener playlists. But the difference between that kind of streaming and active promotion is that you will get far more engagement from listeners with active promotion. When you send them directly to your artist profile and instruct them or ask them to follow you and listen to your music. 
And it's that engagement that's really gonna help you get added to Spotify's algorithmic playlist to help you get more exposure, more people knowing you and ultimately becoming fans and super fans. So if you really wanna get a boost in engagement on Spotify, again, Facebook ads are a great way to do that. And then if you really wanna get your streams and your monthly listener count up, you could always run a playlist push campaign. So Playlist Push is a playlist submission service that'll help you get added to popular listener curated playlists in your genre. This is a great way and one of the most cost effective ways to get a lot of new listeners and a lot of new streams. Just bear in mind that these are gonna be passive streams. So you're not as likely to get a lot of new followers through playlist promotion as you would with direct promotion via Facebook ads. You'll get some new saves and new personal playlist additions, but not necessarily a lot of new followers and certainly not anywhere close to the engagement that you would get using Facebook ads. So that's why I always recommend Facebook ads first. That gets you the most engagement. Then if you can afford it, you can supplement and get a lot more streams and new listeners using a playlist push campaign. So both are ideal if you can afford it, but if money's tight, stick with Facebook first. Now, playlist push campaigns aren't super cheap either. The minimum budget is three to $400, depending on the playlist that you wanna get added to, and then the sky's the limit from there. So you could certainly end up spending a lot of money with playlist push. Now, if you do decide to check it out, check out the promo code in the video description to get seven and a half percent off your first campaign. I'll also link to a video that explains how to use playlist push the right way so you can get good results and you don't end up wasting your money. So again, to quickly recap how you should plan your next release, first and foremost, you need to determine if it makes sense to release a full album or drop singles. If you have a sizable fan base already, people that are looking forward to your next release, then an album release could make sense if you do it right. But if you don't have an existing fan base, nobody's looking forward to your next release, then there's no point really, there's not really any point. So you might as well release singles. That way you can keep giving Spotify and your listeners fresh new music consistently, which can help you get picked up by Spotify's algorithmic playlist and get more people to know you and hopefully become fans. So how often should you release singles? Well, about every six to eight weeks is a good amount of time to keep things fresh, but it also gives you some time to promote each track. Promote one track at a time leading up to the release and then for two or three weeks after the release. Then move on to promoting the next release. When promoting your upcoming releases, submit them to Spotify's editorial staff so you can get added to popular Spotify playlists and submit your music to playlist curators and bloggers and influencers over at Submit Hub. And then you could do a little bit of PR by reaching out to podcasts and local college radio stations. You might be able to book some interviews to help you promote your music. And of course, promote everything to your existing fan base as well. Use pre-save pages, share rough cuts, clips of you in the studio, music videos, Get creative here and get your fans excited about your next release. And if you have a little bit of money to put behind your promotion, Facebook ads are generally going to be your most bang for your buck in terms of engagement. And if you do have a little bit more money to spend beyond that, you can always put that towards a playlist push campaign that'll help you get added to popular listener playlists. All right, so we covered a lot here. Hopefully that all made sense and hopefully that helps you plan a strategy for your next release. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comment section. And if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked in the comment section and share this video with other independent artists that might find it helpful. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that now. Hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and it helps me make more videos like this one. And don't forget to tick that little bell icon to be notified as soon as new videos are released on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.